Hello, beautiful one. Welcome back to week two of the six-week singing challenge. So how did you do with singing with a book on your head? Um, did you feel taller? Are you becoming more aware of what's happening in your body as you sing? Because this is important. A lot of the singing mechanisms that we have, that we use, are not visible to our eyes. So we've got to be able to feel what is going on. Okay, um, so this is where body awareness and kinesthetic feeling is crucial. And remember, you can always close your eyes and have a better kinesthetic feeling. Um, so singing with a book on your head, you know, it may take a bit to learn really how to do that and make it work right and to really feel that body awareness, but keep working. And remember, these concepts are going to build on one another. So um we do the singing with the book on our head, but we're still going to need to think about alignment and body awareness, even as we do these other concepts. Okay. And we're definitely going to need it for this next concept. And that is breathing for singing. And I know what you're thinking. I know how to breathe. And yes, you are right. If you didn't know how to breathe, you wouldn't be here learning about singing. But remember, the breath is the power source of singing. We wouldn't be able to sing or speak without the breath. You see, we can make the vocal folds come together, and that's what we do to keep those foreign materials from going into our lungs, or when we're holding our breath when we're underwater, like that. But to get them to vibrate, you're going to need to have air flow. Um, and there's a physics concept that goes along with that. It's the Bernoulli effect, how the air and the air pressure, but I won't bore that with you. But today I want to show you what's happening in your body as you breathe. And then you're going to learn how to apply that knowledge to breathing for singing. Okay, so this is one of those things where we can't see what's happening in our body, uh, but we're, we can feel the effects of what is happening in our body. Okay, so first we're going to learn about breathing. And here, here is my lung. And as you can see, it's just a part of a plastic bottle with two balloons on it. But I want you to pretend like this is your lung. Now remember, your lung, it spans from your clavicle bone right up here all the way down to the bottom of your rib cage. And for me, it's right around here. So your lungs are pretty big. You know, the only other thing that's in this cavity here in your rib cage is your heart. So your lungs and your heart are here. And then, you know, the rest of your stomach and, and such, the viscera is, is beneath the diaphragm. So the, the red balloon represents the lung and this blue balloon represents the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is like the floor of the lungs. You see how it's on the bottom here? It's like the floor. Now, when your diaphragm is at rest, it is actually kind of um, curved up like this, okay? So I'm gonna push it in like this and you see how there is no air in this in my lung that's in the bottle. And then as the diaphragm goes down, air fills the balloon. So diaphragm up, no air. Diaphragm down, the air comes in the lung. And that's how we breathe. And I, I know it seems counterintuitive because you know we've always thought breathe in. <gasps> And we raise everything up to breathe in, but actually it's that diaphragm that looks like a little mushroom head comes down when we breathe. So why don't you try that? Let's put our hands together like this where you have these three fingers together and we're gonna shape it like a mushroom. And then when we breathe in, it's going to go down. And when you breathe out, it's gonna rise back up. Let's try that again. Breathe in and breathe out. Now you'll notice that my shoulders didn't rise, my sternum didn't rise, nor did it fall. And that's important when we're talking about breathing for singing. So what, what, what happens with the diaphragm going down is it's going to push on that viscera. It's going to push on your stomach and your guts and all that other kind of stuff that's underneath it. And when the diaphragm pushes on that for singing, I'm not talking about your normal everyday breathing, but when you're breathing for singing and your diaphragm pushes down on that, 
where's it going to go? Is it going to go down your left leg? Well, no, of course it's not. What we need to do then is we need to allow the abdomen to expand. So this is what I want to do. I want to show you right here, right here, right above your belly button. I want you to push out your belly. Just push it out like, oh my goodness, I had too much you know, food that I ate. And then I want you to pull it back in where your belly button goes to your spine. And out and in. And feel that motion. Feel what is happening. Out and in. So that's important because when the diaphragm comes down and push on the viscera, we want to relax it so the viscera can go out. And then as you're singing, we're going to push it all back in. So when we breathe, you're going to feel your hands come apart like this. See how my hands came apart? And then we're going to put our belly all the way back in as we exhale. Now, here's where the cookies come in for the cookie challenge. So I need you to get a stack of cookies and meet me out by the couch. Welcome back to the couch. So here's your mission if you choose to accept it. I mean challenge. Here's your challenge. So I'm going to ask my son Martin. I need his help for this. This is my son Martin. Say hi to everybody. Hi. So Martin, I need you to, to lay down on the couch okay. on your back. All right. And here's where the cookies come in that we've talked about. I'm going to take a stack of cookies and I'm going to put them on his belly button. Good. How's that feel? You can see those uh -huh. just fine. Okay. So I'm going to ask you that when you breathe in, because remember when the when we breathe in, the diaphragm comes down and pushes on the viscera and then we want to relax the abdomen. So when we're laying down, that means the abdomen is going to rise as we breathe in. So I'm going to ask you to breathe in and see if you can't get the cookies to rise up. Yes, just like that. Now really try to isolate the abdomen. Be careful that we don't want to, um, to raise up the rib cage. So we don't want the rib cage moving. The rib cage needs to be stationary while we're working on the abdomen. So why don't you raise your rib cage up really quick and show them what I mean. See how he's raising up the rib cage? We don't want that. And go back to the abdomen. So you're thinking belly button. Raise up the cookies with your belly button and then the cookies go back down or as your belly button goes to your spinal column. And you know what? Doing this every day is very, very important to get that feel. And doing it several times a day because then you'll start forming that body awareness of what is going on in your body as you breathe, especially in the diaphragm. Now, if you're feeling really comfortable letting the cookies go up and down, then let's stand up and do the same exact same. So I'll take off the cookies and let's go ahead and stand up. So this is a little more difficult when we're thinking standing as opposed to laying down, but let's go ahead and put our hands right here on our abdomen. We're thinking good alignment. Shoulders over hips, sternum rising to the ceiling, the head floating up to the ceiling. And let's put our hands on our belly and then let's take a big breath and see if the hands can't go apart. So here we go. Really relax the abdomen and then let the abdomen go back in. And let's do another one. Good, and let it out. See, even Martin has a tendency that he wants to raise up his shoulders just a bit as he breathes. Let's do one more and see if Martin can't keep his shoulders down. Here we go. There, that was so much better. So it is, it's a challenge and it's going to take a lot of practice and that's okay. When you stand up, really be thinking of that body awareness, really be thinking about alignment and what is going on. So at least 10 times on your back to make sure that you're getting a good habit of this. So... I know you can do this. This is not beyond you. Practice every day and I'll see you back here next week, okay? Mm -hmm.